This holiday weekend, we're going all out, showing you an ultra crispy, flavorful, crunchy fried chicken and a zippy, tangy potato salad that's perfect for your Independence Day picnic. All right, we're gonna start off with one whole chicken that's been cut up into eight pieces. You can do that yourself or have your butcher do it at the grocery store, totally up to you. Either way, get it into a large bowl and season it aggressively with some cracked pepper and a big pinch of salt. By the way, as usual, all the exact amounts will be down below, so don't feel like you gotta take notes. Just stick with me here for a few minutes. I'm gonna shake in some hot sauce, that part's optional, some onion powder and garlic powder. And we'll also add in about a quart of buttermilk. You just want to use enough to thoroughly coat and submerge that chicken. And about a quarter cup of pickle juice. Nice briny flavor and extra salt there as well. Go ahead and give that a good massage. Get everything thoroughly combined and mixed and then marinate that for at least two hours in the fridge, but you could also leave it overnight. Next up, we'll get started on this potato salad with some really small baby red potatoes. Yukon Gold would work as well, but you want something that's fairly waxy. It'll hold up really nicely in our mustard vinaigrette. Just cut those in half and boil those until they are fork tender in some salted water. While they cook, add a couple tablespoons of whole grain mustard to a bowl, followed by some salt and pepper. A couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, or the vinegar of your choosing. Followed by about a quarter cup of good quality extra virgin olive oil. About a teaspoon of maple syrup for sweetness. And then just whisk all that to combine. By the way, this recipe is vegan, obviously not the chicken part, but the potato salad, so long as you do not add the feta cheese at the end. I'm going in with a couple of chopped green onions and a couple of chopped pickled cherry peppers for extra tang and a little bit of heat, but not too much. Go ahead and whisk all that so it's thoroughly combined. And then once your potatoes are cooked, drain them. And then while they're still nice and warm, go ahead and thoroughly mix them in that mustard vinaigrette. Because they're nice and warm, they will absorb lots of those flavors. Go ahead and pop this in the fridge for about an hour to let it come down to a room temperature or cool off just a little bit. What I love about this is no dairy, no mayonnaise, so you can leave it out on the counter or take it on a picnic and not worry about having to keep it cold. All right, next up, we got a little dredge for our chicken. So a couple cups of all-purpose flour into a big tray, followed by a nice pinch of salt and a crack of pepper. And then we're going to add some more flavor here with some garlic powder and onion powder. A little bit of ground oregano, ground thyme, some cayenne pepper. You could just use paprika if you didn't want the heat or wanted to keep it nice and mild. A little bit of ground mustard, and then my little secret ingredient, if you can call it that, which you can't because I just told you, is a little bit of turmeric. It gives it a nice golden color, really helps it. A nice, beautiful color on that fried chicken. Lastly, we'll put in about a half a cup of cornstarch. Really makes that batter nice and light and fluffy. Gets extra crunchy when it's fried off. All right, so we're gonna take our chicken, let some of that buttermilk brine just drip right down into the flour. It creates nice little crunchy pockets. And then thoroughly coat every bit of that chicken roll it around try and use one hand for the wet and one hand for the dry part of this and then just set that chicken aside rinse and repeat with your remaining pieces of chicken and you do want to let this flour and buttermilk coating set up for about 15 minutes before you fry it if you put it in right away it does have a tendency of falling off so speaking of frying we don't do a lot of that here on the channel but you just can't make great fried chicken without some oil so i'm using my 12 inch cast iron skillet and getting it about halfway full of oil bringing that up at 350 degrees fahrenheit and then very carefully and gingerly laying three to four pieces of chicken in at a time away from me now your cooking time here is going to vary greatly depending on the size of your chicken and how much oil you're using but at least 10 minutes up to 15 minutes maybe for these larger breasts and of course use your digital thermometer to check the temperature we don't want to get anybody sick by undercooking chicken once the pieces are cooked through to at least 160 degrees internally, get them out onto a wire rack to drain and you can keep them warm in a warm oven while you continue to cook away. Now, if you happen to have a large deep fryer, lucky you, you can do all this at once and make it nice and quick. But for those of us who don't do a lot of frying, this cast iron method is the way to go. Again, I'm going in here with my second batch. Just give them a few minutes on that first side, let that coating set up on there and then just keep clipping them until they are cooked through all the way in the very center near the bone. I'm gonna give mine a little Cajun seasoning right before I plate them up. And man, look at that, just golden brown. That turmeric gives it a really nice golden color. 
As I mentioned before, I'm adding a little bit of feta cheese to the potato salad right before I serve it. Just love that creamy, tangy bite of feta, but totally optional. Put some of that potato salad down. Man, look at those little grains of mustard. They're just gonna pop and be so delightful when we eat this. Toss down a couple pieces of chicken and no green onions and no garnishes for me today, folks. This is just good old fried chicken heaven. Let's start out with this potato salad. That mustard vinaigrette packs a massive flavor punch. And because we use those red potatoes that are nice and waxy, they don't completely fall apart and break down. And those pickled cherry peppers really add something special. And that chicken, it's just a thing of beauty. Fried hard, check it out. Mm, but still, so moist and juicy inside. That pickle brine and hot sauce flavors get all the way down into the meat. Man, let's get another bite. You can't fake a crunch like that, folks. I hope you'll give this a try and let me know what you think. As always, enjoy this Independence Day weekend and go make something delicious.